Ben Hayden Fishery in the Chesapeake Bay. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I've lived here all my life. No, I, I don't know nothing about it. No, I know this is what it is. Never even heard of that. I know some people commercial. That's their only way of you know feeding their family. Their only means. I don't know too much about that. Been hitting fishery. Well, I mean, I know that commercial fishermen go out and fish for it now, uh, in order to supply it for bait boxes for local watermen, and uh, I know that pretty much everything eats it. It's a pretty essential bait fish. The Atlantic menhaden, Rivortia tyrannus is a small migratory fish found along the east coast from Nova Scotia to Florida. These forage fish are a keystone species and are essential to the health of the ecosystem as they are a food source for predatory fish and seabirds. Menhaden are known to travel in schools ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions and spawn in the shelf water of the Chesapeake Bay. In the mid-1950s, there were 150 vessels harvesting menhaden along the Atlantic. Today, there are only seven vessels harvesting Menhaden for one reduction facility in Reedville, Virginia, Omega Protein. This plant processes Menhaden into fish meal and fish oil products that are used in pet food, fertilizer, cosmetics, and dietary supplements. Although we do not consume these fish directly, they are used to feed products that we do consume such as farm-raised salmon, poultry, and pork. The Menhaden fishery has come into a narrow media spotlight recently due to controversy between the commercial fishing industry and regulatory organizations who worry that the population has declined to detrimental levels. Conservationists claim that the reduction in harvest is critical to bring back the Manhattan population to its former abundance. In this film, we directed our efforts towards studying the various impacts of the new regulation. We spoke with those most affected by the reduction and discovered the uncertainties within the fishery threshold model. Because of these uncertainties, we decided to explore other management techniques. While traveling in Peru, we studied the efforts used in managing the Peruvian anchoveta and have considered what effect implementing their strategies would have on the Chesapeake Bay. With so much focus on the organisms in the Chesapeake Bay like crabs, oysters, and rockfish, it is easy to overlook a resource that is not used for human consumption. What folks do not realize is that without this keystone species, other populations like the rockfish would decline. While they might not feel direct impacts of the declining Manhattan population, the public will surely feel economic impacts on the cost of seafood in years to come. Restoring the valuable Manhattan will in return sustain our highly treasured Chesapeake Bay ecosystem. We are presenting the controversy and issues around the Atlantic Menhaden to inform people about what is going on with the fishery. As with many environmental issues, there are also strong biases. After reading the most recent stock assessment reports, we found that the data began to contradict itself. Upon seeing how little the community knows about Menhaden, we decided to explore the Menhaden fishery for ourselves in hopes of finding the truth. So, we headed down to Reedville, Virginia, to visit the last remaining Menhaden processing plant on the East Coast, Omega Protein Incorporated. Before our grand tour of Omega Protein's plant, we found Cockerel's, a seafood restaurant owned by Linda Jett. Linda and Mike Vlahovich, a former Reedville resident, explain the impact Omega Protein has on the local economy. If Omega was to ever shut down, um, the economy here would go bad. Well, our property butted up against the Manhattan plant. So I heard it all the time, I smelled it all the time. You just lived in this brown, brown haze from the Manhattan plant. Um, but you, 
you didn't dare complain because they would make it clear to you that that was the smell of money and that's what that's what fueled the town once we arrived at Omega Protein we were greeted by Monty Dio the senior director of fishing operations he shared with us his views regarding the 20 percent reduction we were catching yearly about 550 million fish however when we got this 20 percent reduction it cut us to about 427 million, so that is what our quota is today. We were then given the tour of the processing plant by William Purcell, the environmental manager of the Reedville Omega Protein Facility. One of the most controversial names in the Menhaden contention is Omega Protein, a fish reduction company. This commercial industry uses spotter planes to locate large schools of Menhaden. Spotter pilots are trained to estimate the size of a school and communicate with the boat below, guiding them towards the school, therefore maximizing efficiency. Once ordered, the large vessel sends out two smaller purse boats to surround the school or a section of the school with a purse seine net. After creating a complete circle around the school, the larger vessel can then begin to pull in the net, creating an underwater purse filled with millions of fish. These fish are then pumped onto the boat using a fish vacuum. After the vessel reaches its holding capacity, it then heads into port to unload its catch. As, as Monty mentioned, we are, we are the economic engine for this rural area, this four county area. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission that manages all the Atlantic fisheries placed a limit on the Menhaden fishery, and because of this monumental regulation, we decided to take a closer look at the way federal agencies, like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, determine the most ideal percentage of reduction. There's consensus that we're overfishing, but it's uncertain by how much. We know we need to end overfishing, but we don't exactly know what percent of reduction in harvest will get us there immediately. How can we know whether or not it's overcatch until we really control that catch? We were introduced to the fishery threshold models and stock assessments which hold much controversy due to discrepancies in data collection. You report landings in the fishery. That means you report where the fish were landed not necessarily give you a whole lot of information about where they were caught. That would be, you know, left to the fishermen to, to know about that. And they, essentially, the only people that produce data for their model is Omega Protein. Probably one of the big core issues here with Menhaden is the concern that, yes, it's a single species that's fished for bait and for the reduction fishery, but it's also important forage fish for a lot of other things. Understanding that the bait fishery is also an important aspect of the Menhaden catch, we wanted to speak with a pound net fisherman located on the Chester River. Unlike Virginia, purse nets have been banned in Maryland since 1931. Therefore, pound net fishing is the only efficient way to catch Menhaden in the Maryland waters of the Chesapeake Bay. Impacts of the declining Atlantic Menhaden population are felt along the entire East Coast. Unlike many conservationists, Watermen are not blaming Omega Protein for the decline. The numbers were down this year because I think of the rainfall all up and down the bay. Now, last year it would have hurt them a lot because they they rely on it. You know, they catch, you know, they come in with two, three hundred bushel. Problem with that is, like this year, later in the year, and we had a lot of men hating in here, especially down the river farther. In the mornings, I mean, the whole river was completely covered with them on top, but the nets would catch zero because certain times a year they just will not trap in a pound net. In nature you have rabbits. Everyone, everything eats a rabbit, you know, and it's like same thing out here. Everything eats men ate. You know, it's, not, it's one of the best baits you can have for catfish and there's no shortage of catfish, so you know the catfish are eating them. You know, there's a lot of different, a lot of stuff that's after them. After assessing the various viewpoints from each of the stakeholders in the Menhaden fishery, it appears that there is little trust in the current management practices involving the Menhaden. 
There are significant uncertainties revolving around the effectiveness of the 20% reduction. Even with the lack of sufficient data, the Atlantic States Marine Fishery Commission recognized the need to create a temporary solution. Thus, the 20% reduction was implemented. If the current reduction proves to be effective in restoring Menhaden populations when assessed in 2014, we anticipate that commercial fisheries like Omega Protein would need to adapt to a smaller catch limit in order to stay in business. Hmm. But how? As part of the Chesapeake Semester curriculum, we traveled to Peru to learn more about the country's rich culture and ecosystems, and were introduced to a fishery very similar to our Atlantic Menhaden. The Peruvian anchoveta, Engralis ringens, is a small forage fish that lives in the waters of the Humboldt upwelling, a cold water current off the coast of South America. The anchoveta thrives in abundance because of the ideal conditions offered by the nutrient-rich waters of the Humboldt current. As an important member of the ecosystem like the Menhaden, anchoveta serve as a food source for predatory fish and seabirds. By 1970, the anchoveta were harvested in astounding numbers, over 12 million metric tons, with the average anchoveta weighing a quarter of a pound at most. Due to severe overfishing, the annual harvest is now only 8 million metric tons. However, the anchoveta fishery has remained the largest single species fishery in the world. The fish meal and fish oil that are the products of this reduction fishery are in high demand within the country of Peru. These products also make their way onto the shelves of stores around the globe, including the United States. Fish oil country of origin is Peru. Product of Peru. That's two, three out of the four. The reduction fishery in Peru has been depleted much like that of the Atlantic Menhaden, but the management approach is very different. El Centro para la Sustenibilidad Ambiental is an important environmental organization focused on the sustainable development of Peru. They have recognized the importance of anchoveta to the Peruvian ecosystem and have taken it upon themselves to help the fish by changing its social stigma. Instead of taking a regulatory approach to manage the fishery by way of restriction, CSA drove a movement to transition from fish meal to fish meals. CSA created a partnership with a top chef a biologist, and a graphic designer in order to tackle this issue. With their unique viewpoints, they were able to devise a plan to reawaken the cultural connections to anchoveta in order to decrease harvest. By using fish for human consumption, uh, we can provide twice as much income and four times as much employment as what we do now, which is mainly using the most important fishery on Earth to produce fish meal and oil to feed animals around the world. If the anchoveta is processed for direct human consumption, the fish has greater added value, which allows for low catches while maintaining economic stability. Can the Chesapeake Bay region follow in Peru's footsteps and transition Menhaden into a product for direct human consumption? Would you eat a Menhaden? Oh, no. That's, that's going to be a tough sell. If no one will eat the Menhaden directly, how else can we balance ecology and economy in the Chesapeake Bay region? we considered an approach similar to CSAs. In the Chesapeake Bay, we should increase the market demand for human consumption of a fish oil as a dietary supplement. If the reduction of the catch limit proves to be beneficial to the health of the fishery, this transition towards human-consumed oil would not only allow for the growth of the economy, but would also contribute to the preservation of the species. The management techniques of Peru and prospectively of the Chesapeake Bay are both based on a revolutionary change in the way a species of fish is used. CSA has taken steps towards a specific market because there is potential for direct consumption. Although Atlantic Menhaden has a much lower potential in this regard, we can take aspects of CSA's progressive reformation of the industry. We can learn from Peru as we move forward into the environmental reform surrounding the industry in the Bay and therefore anticipate similar changes that might have negative impacts on the ecosystem. When human beings begin to deplete a resource like Menhaden or Anchoveta, we are obligated to alter the way we view the supply. In the Chesapeake Bay, making a reduction like the 20% cut is a clear manifestation of an effort to reduce human impact on naturally occurring species. It is uncertain if the change in the annual catch limit will truly benefit the fishery, but regardless of if it does or not, 
there can still be hope for this small but mighty forage fish, the Atlantic Menhaden. Oh my sweet heaven on the Chester, my backyard. My sweet heaven on the Chester, you should hear the wild geese call. For it's their men work upon the water, tonging for the oyster, nowhere men were caught. My sweet heaven on the Chester, all year long we're singing heaven, 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 heaven on the ocean. Singing heaven, heaven, 